Alright guys, I'm back after that shit storm. Um, so I've replaced the, the timing belt and that pulley. That pulley now has a lip on it, on the back of it. Um, engine runs fine, but we did flat tow it back for about 3Ks. So I've destroyed the gearbox. Auto chains. Um, I was driving okay. And then it would just start shuddering in the rear. So what I did was I put the fuse in the fuse box, which makes it front wheel drive, and it drives fine in front wheel drive. Um, so I can drive around. I fixed the oil leak that I had on the oil feed for the turbo. I just put another washer under the fitting, which pushed it up a little bit, um, because the actual fitting for the braided line was a little bit too chunky for the top of the uh, turbo and that fits good it's not leaking um, fix the water leak was, um, I did on that little bypass from the heater pipes that's all fixed so there's no water leak now um, just got a small oil leak from the sandwich plate I went and got a deep socket, a 24mm impact, so it's just a hex. So, got to get the filter off, tighten that up, nip it up, and it should be good. Um, it's probably down 30Ks maybe on the car now. So, it's been a couple of days since I videoed last. <laughs> I was cracking the shits. But, been checking some of the records. It's the records that's close with 2000-2001 Impreza. It's automatic and it's got 85,000 Ks on it. So I might go check that out today. Reasonably cheap. It's one of the cheaper um, automatic gearboxes at the records, which I found pretty strange. But yeah. Well, um, I'll just nip it up and see how she goes. I'm not going to be driving the Forest though, still driving the Peugeot just until this is all good. Also, had a little visit to Lee at Melbourne Performance Centre in Croydon. Um, I've done a couple of my tunes before on my GTIRs. Um, they recently moved to that back street here. Yes, yeah, so I went to Melbourne Performance Centre in Croydon. Um, they're pretty good there. They've done a couple of my client's cars as well. Um, he races cars. Um, they're really an Audi specialist for racing. So I think they did a lot of the, um, the R8s recently. I think it was for the Australian Grand Prix. Um, and they've done rally stuff as well. So they know their Subarus. Um, also they got an all drive dyno. Um, was talking to Lee down there for a little while. Yes, just bring it down and we'll plug it in, see if we can flash the stock ECU. If you can, it'll be all good. He said every Subaru is different as well with what size injectors, how much power you can actually get out of the car. So, um, I have got injectors, but I think they're just a little bit too big. We're talking about E85 as well. Um, it's a daily driver. It's not very reliable around this area because it all depends on how they mix the fuel as well. So just go to your normal petrol station that you always go to, get 98 octane, which we have here in Australia, in Victoria. Um, yeah. It goes, gives us a couple of weeks notice before we do a dyno tune and um, should be all good. So what I need to do is just get a gearbox and uh, I'll go down, get it plugged in, see if it's all good and have to wait a couple of weeks. Alright guys, just tightened up the sandwich plate. It's nice, 24mm deep socket. It was the wrong size. I believe it's a 26. Um, I did try it on 
one of my other adapter bits. Yeah, that was fine. I guess the new adapter one was bigger. Oh well, I've got that part of my tool set now. I'm just going to check some numbers on the gearbox and then I'll head off to the records. I won't take you guys long. Um, but you guys seem to like the records runs. Yeah, just want to get in there. Maybe if it looks good, the right numbers, um, I'll start to take it out. Like I'll loosen up all the bolts and everything and probably come back tomorrow and take it out. But that'll be in this episode. Also, lost a little bit of oil while I was changing over this or tightening up the sandwich plate. And just checked out the oil. It's got a 30, 40 Ks on it. And it's looking good. Looking good so far, even with what happened. Um, I've probably put an extra 15 Ks on since um, what happened. And also with that idling. I know I shouldn't have it idling with a built motor just yet. I need to bed it in, but I could do that to fill up um, the fluids. So that's been running. Probably been running for a total of half an hour, 40 minutes. Yeah, oil's looking good. Alright, guys, it's a new day and it's freaking cold. Um, I found a gearbox um, just up the road at Pick Park. The only one that all the numbers matched, so won't be getting it today, which is a Friday, so probably over the weekend. Hopefully, if the weather's good, rainy and windy and cold and awful, I was going to go for a little drive around in the Forester, um, in front wheel drive, um, see how it goes. A little stick close to home. Yeah. Just came back from drive, probably put about 20 Ks on the car. It's all good. Um, the aftermarket water temp gauge though, that was over 100. But the gauge on the dash didn't move, went up to normal operating temperature. So I'm not sure if it's the, the gauge that I've got that's faulty or what. Um, but it's always going up to like 95 I know it shouldn't be sitting at 95 so I got a, like a what is it, 78 degrees thermostat in there um, unless there's some air in the system I guess and it's heating up might head down to the part shop to see if there's um, an adapter you can fit on where the radiator cap goes <coughs> So I can have it up a bit higher so I can feel it and get all the air bubbles out. I have like a little plunger or something, you can stop it. Um, it's front wheel drive, lost traction a couple of times, it is a bit wet out there. Um, yeah, it drives good though. The TD05, it sounds insane. Um, I need to adjust my blow valve though. I didn't hear it go off once and I was getting up to about 10 psi. Um, yeah, so I gotta adjust that. Um, it's the same as this one here, this blitz blow off valve here. So I need to adjust the top there, I guess. Um, yeah, so it is Saturday, just turned to the afternoon. Just got home from work. I drove Forestly yesterday for about 25 30 k's. Um, the alternator is stuffed. I'm going to get a new belt. I'm going to head it over to pick apart and get another alternator. Not going to film what the wreck is, but I'll film chucking it back on. Nice and easy, nice and quick. Alright, guys. Sorry I didn't film it, but I've changed over the alternator, the new alternators, charging at about 14.4. Not too good. That's all fixed now. It's running great. Um, except for the gearbox. I can only drive it in front wheel drive. 
stay tuned for the next episode when uh, we fix the gearbox.